Hey there, everybody in the internet land. David Adams here with Budget Audio File coming to you from my theater because we're going to do a quick update. And you may notice I'm in handheld mode because I'm going to jump right behind the camera real quick and we're just going to get right into the updates. This is not going to be a long video at all. I've got some really cool updates I think you guys are going to like. Uh, found out what we're going to do with those amplifiers and put it into action. So let's just jump into it and see what changes we have going on. Okay, so let's just jump in talking about what hasn't changed, and that's mostly our bed layer. You see the left, center, and right are still the same, those TP2400 enclosures. Upgraded the tweeters, upgraded the crossovers. So now the crossover incorporates a sub-bass, mid-bass, and tweeter. All I need to do now is change out those bottom woofers to really get that bass thundering home when we're listening to two-channel music or just to really drive home that extra punch when watching movies. The screen's still the same. Uh, it's the same home gear, 125-inch. All I did was just remove the frame and we went ahead and wrapped it in that fabric that we put on the walls. I think it really solidifies the look and just kind of brings everything together, makes it look really nice in this theater. And turning around, you can see we've got our left and our right surround sides. Coming up close to them, you can see we still have our dual 10 inch woofers, our six and a half inch mid range, and our one inch compression horn. These things still sound phenomenal. I love them. I'm so happy I built these and I'm so proud of this build. This is a hot rod from hell right here. These things sound so good. And we've got them matched on both sides just so that we can have timbre matching with our front left center and right and stepping back to the rear the darkest part of the theater you can see we've got our left and our right surround rears these are still the same you still have two seven inch mid woofers and a nice eight inch bass driver along with a one inch compression tweeter this is not in a horn but these sound exactly the same as those those just project a little bit better with those horn guides again all timbre matched all the way around so they sound really nice and looking up top you can see what we're running for at most. These are KB6000 enclosures. I went ahead and gutted them out and I replaced the electronics so that we can have full timbre matching with a one inch compression horn as well. Really trying to, on a budget, run as best timbre matching throughout all of my bed layer and Atmos layer as possible. So this included sourcing out matching tweeters throughout the entire build process for all speakers and matching the electronics therein, so matching crossovers, etc. And you can see I've got them all the way around, and of course they're all timbre matched. And with that, my entire bed layer is crossed over at 80 hertz, so they all blend seamlessly together. They all match nicely when going down to the subwoofers, which we will get into here in a minute. My projector is still the same. It's an Epson 2150, except I went ahead and replaced the bulb with an upgraded 3500 lumen that's up from 2500 lumens. So this thing just cuts through the light whenever I've got all the lights on, as you can see. And that's in its eco mode. When this thing is on full mode, it is just ridiculous. Nice vivid colors. 1080p display. I haven't seen a reason to go up to 4K yet, but I'm sure I'll find that reason here in a few months, probably when this bulb blows out and I don't feel like replacing yet another bulb. Down here, you can see much of the electronics are still the same. I'm still using my Denon X4400H AVR, 11 channels of Atmos. It's fantastic. Made it to a Model 2 version of the X800 Blu-ray player from Sony. And I'm still running my Pile PT8000CH for some of my bed layer. And here's where the real fun begins. These are two of the NX4 6000s you saw in the last video powering these subwoofers up here. I've got six of the eight channels utilized for six 18 inch subwoofers, which we'll get to in a minute. Each one wired down to two ohms, so they're getting the full 1600 watt Monty out of this amplifier per channel. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with those extra two channels. I do have an idea though. Let's talk about those subwoofers while we're up front. These are six SCAR SDR 18 inch subwoofers wired down to two ohms. These things are absolute beasts and give me well over 100 dB at 10 Hertz. And even I'm even over 100 dB at nine Hertz, which is just phenomenal for this theater. The reason why I went with these is one, because we are the budget audio file and these things have a fantastic price. And two, because they really do respond really, really low. And they're nice and loud, so they don't just reach low, they actually get low and get loud. And it's nice, rich, clean bass throughout the entire bandwidth that these subwoofers deliver. These sub drivers really are absolutely insane and I absolutely love them. I seriously hope they don't catch on 
selfishly because I don't want the price to go up. <laughs> I really don't want demand to go up, therefore the price goes up. I would love for the price to stay nice and low so I can continue to buy these as I continue to expand my theater. Stepping back here, the build is still the exact same as you guys saw in the last videos. We have six 15s, three Dayton Audio RSS 390s over here, and three SCAR SDR 15s over here. These are all bridged down to two ohms. These are running at a four ohm load each, and they love eating up all that amplification. The new kit on the block back here, no, it's not the Dreamcast and the N64. It's the NX4 6000, the third NX4 6000 running back here. It's giving these guys all the amplification they could want. And man, I just love having all of this power available back here. It is just absolutely fantastic. So for those keeping tabs, yes, going to just my subs, I've got 18,000 watts and I can't wait to expand upon that. I do have an idea though, to where we can get two more 18s in here. When I put those two SCAR drivers in there, I took my Dayton Audio subs out of there and I still have those, no one's bought them yet. And if they continue to not sell, what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and build two boxes for those. And we will have eight 18s and six 15s in this theater. And that will just be absolutely profound. I have no idea what I'm going to do with all that sound. Um, it's probably going to be a nightmare to balance out, but it'll be really fun once we get it all together. Other than that, as you guys can see, my seating arrangements are exactly the same. I did swap the leather couch and the suede couch around. So now the big brown suede couches up front and the leather couches at the back. I did that just to give a bit more seating comfort up here. I really like the way this couch feels and it kind of puts me directly under my Atmos speakers, which is nice. Switching here, you see my movie collection. This top row is almost all horror now and I really like horror movies. Uh, those are pretty much all I watch. I'll sometimes dip into action movies and animated movies, but man, horror is my jam. And yeah, I'm working with about 500 movies if you guys want to go through and count them all. And uh, it's a lot of fun having this many movies because it means that even when the internet goes out or, you know, we're having a stormy day, I could just grab a movie, throw it in a Blu-ray player and let it rip. And this theater is monstrously loud. Again, I'm hitting over 100 decibel at 10 hertz, over 100 decibel at 9 hertz, really, even though I'm crossed over at 10 hertz from my high pass filter. It's a whole lot of fun when I'm watching movies here and I just really can't express just the breadth of sound that you get from this. And combined with that ridiculously awesome picture from that new bulb, it just all comes together so very nicely. Anyway, so that's it guys. Uh, I just wanted to talk really quick about my theater, uh, just to kind of give you guys an updated tour of what's going on. You can see we've got the new sub drivers, we've got the new amplifiers in place, and we've got it all balanced out. This sounds really great. If I do decide to go with the new 18s, or rather the two Dayton Audio 18s that we took out of there, I'll do another update video and we'll have eight 18 inch drivers in here, which is kind of silly, uh, especially when you think that we still have six 15s in the back. I talk about my 18 so much that I often forget that I have six 15s in the back. So when comparing with other over the top theaters, I'm like, oh, I've only got eight 18s, but I've also got six 15s back there. So yeah, it's pretty silly. Anyway, guys, that's it. Uh, this video has gone on a lot longer than I wanted it to. Hopefully I can keep it under 15 minutes. If not, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you for sticking around if you've watched it this long. Uh, do that whole like, comment, and subscribe thing. Seriously, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. It helps out a lot and it helps to motivate me to make more videos um, and bring out more content. Hopefully we can start making more helpful content as we start you know, working with other content creators and things like that. So yeah, guys, uh, anyway, that's it. David Adams with Budget Audio File. We'll see you guys in the next video.